So, hello again. This is Shauna with New to the Country Life. And I'm getting ready to pour. This is one of my medium boards. Um, I have two different medium sized ones. This one has dividers that stick up, so it makes it easy for pouring the board, um, similar to that small one we did the other day. You can check out that um, video on pouring the mini chess boards to see it. This mold does not, it, it has two different textures is what it has. So it's not very good for pouring a solid, you know, pouring resin in it into individual squares and having that, um, stay divided it it runs into the other squares because there's not an actual divider that sticks up so for this board I like using it for things like we're gonna do today where we're gonna paint black in as a solid color on um, the flat squares and these ones that have texture we're gonna pour the whole thing to do a gray marble and we're gonna do that with some silver um, and white alcohol inks and that will cover the the whole thing so the black will show through as black squares but everywhere I didn't put it it's gonna come through on these textured squares so you'll see a textured um, silver marble and to get started we're gonna pick a brush and we're gonna grab our black this is our black mica powder from Arteza uh, color is noir or um, G7 is our color and we're going to go ahead and start painting that in and I'll just show you quickly how to do a few squares I'll pause it finish it and come back to where we're ready to pour the whole thing so we dip it down our brush down in the mica and we're not trying to get too much on it just the tip these are makeup brushes from the dollar store don't spend a lot of money on brushes because you go through them quite fast and we just start painting that down in these squares. We just go right up to the edges and try to be as clean as you can so you have a nice crisp edge. And I just find if you like pull it toward you or from side to side, you can go right along the edge and have a nice crisp side. And you don't want too much because the mica is staticky and the boards are staticky and it will jump off your brush and land places you don't want it so the best way I found to do it is very little at a time and just be gentle with it and careful with it it's kind of time-consuming but it ends up looking very nice Now I'm going to show you how to clean up where you get messy because you are going to get messy. The very first thing I do is blow it off so there's no excess laying on there. And I keep wax paper on my table so you want to make sure that wax paper stays flat when you lay it back down. To clean it off, I use a tiny piece of my towel. Um, this is just shop towel. Like guys use it for mechanics. I spray a tiny bit of alcohol on it. I don't want it wet. I just want it the edge of it damp. And I just go along and wipe that right off and clean it right up. And in this particular mold, it's much harder to clean because that's a textured square next to it. It might even be better to paint the textured squares in. I don't I don't know. That's just your personal preference, what you'd like to do. But um this is, this is why you try not to get it everywhere and you try to be clean with it so that you get crisp edges. And you just go in and wipe that off and that way it doesn't show through the next layer. And with this one, the next layer is tones of silver and white. So if you had black in there, it will, it'll pop, it'll show up. So you want to make sure you get it clean. I'm going to pause this, I'm going to do the rest of the board, and then I'll be back, and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I'm back, 
and I've got my scores painted in and I'm get I've mix, mixed my resin so you didn't have to watch that part. I'm going to do white and silver marble and I want it mostly silver. So I've separated out about 5 um, ounces of the resin and I'm going to add white to it. And we're going to get it stirred up. And I'm going to only partially stir it. I'm going to let a little bit of clear be in there so that we actually get um, three different tones in there. It may or may not mix completely um, once we get it on the board and start doing that. The silver is uh, pinata silver and you need to shake it before you pour it because it has um, it separates and sinks to the bottom. It has a little roller ball in there so you want to shake it until that ball moves freely and then we'll mix it in. I've got two containers here with um, clear right now that we're going to turn into silver. So we're going to put a bunch of that in there. Sometimes that little roller ball that's in there gets in the tip and prevents it from coming out. So you have to just kind of tip it back and go again. I might add a little silver mica to this um, as well because the inks can be kind of transparent and I don't really want that. But let me mix this up and see what it looks like first. I don't know if you can see that. It's it's got a lot of transparent in it. So I am going to put some of the silver mica in it so that it um, gives us more of a solid silver color. So let me find that real quick. They have one called, Arteza makes one called Brilliant Silver. So I think that's what we're going to put into this time. And it should mix with the alcohol ink very nicely. And that'll give us more of an opaque um, resin than see-through. mixing it to get all that powder in there. See the more I mix it the more it's becoming more opaque because it's distributing throughout the resin. Yeah it's a lot better. Stir this other cup up and this mold takes um, about 16 ounces. The mini one like this takes 8 ounces. This takes 16 and the my large ones take 24. So they all take quite a bit of resin but that's why they get pricey is because the amount of resin it takes is it's quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just begin pouring around the edges. I'm going to fill this whole thing in and then we're going to come back with the white and kind of just spread it all around in there and we're going to use our tool to create kind of a um, marbling pattern.
you'll see I'm going to reserve part of this because I don't want to just fill it too full to begin with where we can't fit the white in there. And in the other video that we uploaded today, we um, poured pieces um, to match this. So it'll be a nice set for our customer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of thin line. And I'm just going back and forth. It doesn't matter what pattern because we're going to um, use our tool and kind of spread it out. I'm paying attention to the lip of the mold because I don't want to overfill it. I'm trying to get it right up to the lip so that we have a nice flat board. And that's about all the white I want in there. So I'm gonna take the silver and finish um, just filling in and breaking this up a little bit. Watching the edges, because I don't want it to overflow on, all over my table. And we're getting really close to the edge of there. So we're just gonna stop right there. I can see that's down just a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to take the tool that is meant for eating Chinese food, our chopstick. And I like using the chopstick because it's bamboo, it doesn't absorb stuff, and it's easy to clean when we're done. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start swirling this. And it really doesn't matter what pattern you do because this stuff flows on its own, gravity, heat wind, um, air moving in here, everything makes it uh, move until it sets up. The only thing I'm being very careful not to do is to hit the bottom of the mold where we've painted that black on because you don't want to put scratches in it um, because that will show through when it's finished and you want to keep those nice solid black squares. So we're just not touching the bottom of the mold here and we're just swirling this in. And now that way we don't have any globs of any certain color. Make sure we get the edges so that that marbling is all through it. Let's see if I can get you up closer so you can see it a little better. That pattern will not stay. I'll tell you that right now. It um, just over the next couple hours, it's going to kind of be alive and move on its own. I can come back before it sets up fully and um, move it around again and have a better chance of it staying. I'm just noticing that this edge is down just slightly, so I'm just making sure we got enough. We don't want it to overflow, but we do want it to be full. I'm just, it takes almost every bit of 16 ounces to fill that. I think there's half an ounce there and about one ounce in that cup. And we're just going to swirl that where I just poured more so that it mixes in and doesn't look funny. And we're going to use the torch and get rid of the bubbles that are appearing on the back here so that it's bubble free. Don't burn your mold when you do this. Just go across the resin and you'll see the bubbles pop. There are bubbles you may or may not be able to see with your naked eye, but when you go across it, you definitely see them when they pop. You'll know that you got them. I carefully go around the edges. I don't want to burn my mold, but I don't want bubbles around the edges either. So. I'm just carefully watching and going around it and making sure that I don't have any bubbles. If I see anything, I try to take care of it at this point, but I think that's about it. Um, this mold takes eight ounces and I don't have eight ounces mixed here, but I think what I'm going to do is pour the rest of this white on it and let it spread out. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and pour what little silver I have in it as well and we can do like a two-part pour on this one so I want it to have some gold in it some silver in it it's got black in it right now so we're just going to use up this resin and make it look really cool And when you pour in layers like this, you can see through, unless you're doing something that's completely non-transparent, opaque, um, you can see the different layers in there. So that's kind of a cool effect. And to make that smooth out, since there's not that much in there, I'm just going to kind of move it around. Just don't want to spill it anywhere. But make sure the whole mold has at least one coat on it. I'm going to take my chopstick and I'm just going to move it around again. And this one we can touch because it's different layers of resin in there already. It's not um, not going to come off or anything. So we're just kind of swirling it around. Mixing it a little bit. And then I'll come back later with probably a gold color and finish filling in the the five more ounces or six more ounces that it needs. You can see a couple bubbles are starting to form again. You can do this for about 10 or 15 minutes after you pour it. Just keep coming back and checking it, making sure that you're getting all the bubbles out. On flat molds like this, this is the best way, unless they will fit in your pressure pots. And if they fit in pressure pots and you can get them in there without spilling them, that's how I like to do it. It's almost impossible to pick something up like this and not spill it though, so that's why we use the propane torch. So, we did a lot today. This is my last video for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to unmold all these other chest sets that we poured earlier. Um, and we'll take the chest sets out of the pressure pot and I'll unmold those with you so that you can see techniques for getting the, the different pieces out of the molds and how to put them together and stuff like that. Hope you've enjoyed all of today's videos and please leave comments and questions down below or feel free to find me on Facebook at New to the Country Life and send me messages. I'm just going to end by showing you this and how it's moved already. So you can see everything's kind of flowing toward the center. And that's because even though this table is flat, the mold is softer in the middle because it has doesn't have the structure of the corners. So it tends to like dip and everything flows toward the middle. So what I'll do is I'll come back in about half an hour and I'll, I'll try to put some swirls back in it like this so that it's um, not just a you know, a plain looking thing. But over the next couple hours, it's going to just continue to move around. So no matter what I do to it now, it's, it's not going to stay that way. But hopefully in a couple hours, I'll come back and do something like that to it. So the back of the board has as much character as the front. And that's what makes them pretty. Okay, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.